uh, of this course, you have actually levels where some constraints are infin infinitely more important than others. Uh, you might actually need more than two or three, four levels. Uh, and you can have even have more, com uh, more complex constraints like variables. But anyway, if you go back to our eight solutions we just uh, generated uh, a minute ago, you can see that now we have an objective where you're saying this is really bad, minus six. We have also seen that this is pretty good, it's minus one. Now for n queens, it's, it's simple, uh, we know the perfect score, it's zero. But if we do something like vehicle routing or like uh, course captain scheduling, we don't know the perfect score in advance. So this might actually be the best thing we can find. Now the question is, how do we, how do we write an algorithm which finds us the solution, right? Um, so uh, we need optimization algorithms and we need the best uh, solution available in time. Um, so one way you can do this is with exact methods, right? So uh, brute force, basically try every single combination. Um, so you have an idea what will happen in that case. We start off with an empty chessboard on the top, as you can see. Uh, we place per so every queen is bound to its column. We will not try putting two queens on the same column. So uh, for example, on the top row, uh, so there we put the queen A, which is the, the first column. Uh, on the first row, then on the second row, then on the third row, and on the fourth row. So that's the first thing we try. But the problem is that from there on we branch out further because we're basically going to try every combination, but now that we've placed queen A on the first row there, we're going to try every combination where queen A is on the first row below that. And uh, then when we place queen B on the second row and queen C on the third row, we're going to, each time we're again we're going to try every combination below that, which is still possible. So if all three queens are on the same row, we're going to try all these combinations, uh, all these four. We'll see, of course, that the, all of them are the best score we can get is minus four. And then we will basically try the next one, next one, and next one. At some point, we will try this combination. And we will and we'll find the, uh, a feasible and even optimal score. Uh, but we, if we don't know the perfect score, we'll actually continue until we do all of them. And then we'll figure out that these are the optimal score. And we actually might actually find the we'll actually support them. Um, this will take 264 steps for uh, for queens, but uh, we, the optimal one we have to find it at about half, right? Now, the thing is, how does this scale? And that's where it goes bad. So, eight queens takes eight seconds. Nine queens, three minutes. Ten queens, one per, uh, an hour. Eleven queens a day, twelve queens a month, thirteen queens a year. And we want to get to 100, 1,000. 10,000 queens, 50,000 queens, we want to get to there. So, so basically there's this wall coming at you. And brute force doesn't work, that's, that's a pretty simple way. So, uh, quick ID, 100 queens. Um, how many combinations you have there? Well, it's 100 to the power 100. So that's 10 to the power 200, so that's a that very big number. That's the number of combinations you have there. Right? So, um, more generally, it's the number of values times the number of vari variable sets. So if you have, for example, lectures, you have, uh, let's say, 5,000 lectures, and you have uh, 40 rooms, that's four, 40 to the power of 5,000, which is uh, uh, very big. <laughs> now, when you try, let's say you have a very, very fast computer where you can do uh, about uh, a million of these uh, evaluations of the score, and you remember for each of these evaluations of the score, you need to compare of if any queen cannot detect any other queen. There are some performance things you can do there, but basically you do, you do need to do that. And uh, let's say we can do about a billion of those per millisecond, then we can do about 10 to the power 20 scores per year. And if you then see how long this would take, let's say 400 queens, that would take 10 to the power 80 years. Uh, for 10,000 queens, uh, yeah, that, that number is huge. The thing you have to realize is that Moore's law is a drop in the ocean here. You cannot solve this by throwing more hardware at it. At it. Um, you cannot solve this by waiting until Moore's law doubles your uh, CPU power uh, or uh, in your number of cores and Andrew's law and so forth. That, 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 that doesn't work. Um, it's, it shapes, you know, uh, even if it's on 100 queens, you get to 10 to the power uh, 178. That's, that's, that's the same number, right, for us. It's too long. So, of course, many of you already saw 
why would the why would you put two queens on the same row here? That's a stupid idea. Don't do that. Uh, so the next improvement you can do on top of that is uh, that first search with backtracking. So what you do is you go into the most promising branches first. Now on the top you don't really don't know. You put the four four queens there. Uh, you have four options there, so let's just take the first one. And then when you start putting the second queen, you, you immediately notice, okay, this is a bad idea uh, because uh, I have more promising branches now. This one also, this one looks promising, you also investigate that. Then you come to the conclusion that yeah, there is no, uh, no feasible solution there. And we have promising branches which currently still have a better score. So you backtrack, you backtrack from these up and you go and you investigate this one further. Also again, no, no a feasible solution, you still have more more uh, promising branches up there and you backtrack and, and then you get there. And it's apparently 26 steps here. Uh, the problem is that this scales badly again. It's not, it doesn't break down at 10 queens, it breaks down at 20, 30 queens. Um, it, it doesn't scale again. Um, there are a couple of tricks here again which you can do, but uh, more generally, um, branch and uh, these kind of uh, uh, backtracking and so forth, they, once you get to series numbers, series scale, they don't have enough uh, CPU power, they don't have enough memory. Uh, because why do, don't they have enough memory? It's because you have to keep, remember all your promising branches. And now we're only showing four, but if you have uh, eight queens, then you have eight branches of every level. And if you have 100 queens, well, you can have a lot of promising uh, branches. So, uh, how do you solve this? Well, one thing you can do is go for construction heuristics. <laughs> Um, where you basically just say, uh, I'm going to uh, place the first queen where I can, uh, I'm going to take a queen, place it, take a queen, place it, take a queen, place it. So uh, it's basically first come, first serve. So uh, here, as you can see, a uh, uh, number of people are wanting a room, right? And you give the first person a room, you give the second person a room, the best available room, and then the third person with that last still available room. So if we do that with queens, it's the same thing. We take the first queen. We place it in the best available remaining spots. Well, it doesn't really matter, so we take the first one. But then for the second queen, well, we won't just place it here and here, we'll take this one. So it's kind of like the backtracking thing, but the, the only difference is that you don't backtrack. You just go down, and at some point you come to a solution where all the queens have been placed. That's a construction heuristic. This is what you get. Of course, uh, this one isn't feasible. It has a score of minus two. Uh, but it does give you an answer uh, in reasonable time. You don't have to wait uh, 10 to the power of 180 years, which is nice. Uh, first, that decreasing is, is an improvement upon that. What you're basically going to do is you're going to say, okay, some we want to place the, uh, the, the queens which are more difficult to place. So in the course scheduling, the courses which are more difficult to place, we're going to place them first, which are more likely to, to hinder the constraints and so forth. So we're going to order them. So in this case, you're going to order the person which you want to give priority to first. And um, so if you do that for uh, for uh, end queens, we're going to place the middle queens first. Why? The middle queens are the most uh, are, are the most difficult queens. Because uh, if a queen is in the middle of a chessboard, she can attack far more than she is in the corner. So if you ever play chess, keep your queen out of the corners. Um, now, the point is, uh, if you do it like that, and we follow the same, basically the same algorithm again as we did two slides ago, we now get to minus one, which is better than minus two. Right? It's, it's, it's an improvement, it's a nice improvement. Uh, so, what are metaheuristics? Well, metaheuristics will basically take this solution, which we found by uh, construction heuristics, and will transform it into a better and better and better solution. And there are a couple of ways of doing that. So, um, so basically we take an empty chessboard, we add the construction heuristics, and then um, the uh, um, the meta heuristics uh, such as tabu search, which is one of the meta heuristics to get to our optimal solution, right? So, um, okay. How do you get to an, uh, a different solution? Well, you basically do a change. There are many different uh, ways of doing a change, but the most simple way of doing a change is take one queen and move it to another position. So if you're in course scheduling, you take one lecture and you move to another room, or you move to another room at another period, and so on. Now, the thing is, the thing to understand is that the number of change moves is actually far less than the number of solutions. So uh, it's n to the power 2, while the number of solutions is n to the power n. 
And even in that case, we're not going to look at every possible move. We're going to look at a subset of those because uh, even if we, if we go to like a thousand moves, and well, looking at a million moves is, is getting hard in some cases. Uh, depending, of course, on how many constraints there are. Now, the thing is with actually sequentially doing moves, you can actually get to any solution uh, which is possible. So you can, like you can see here, we start from the solution where all the queens can attack each other, and in three moves, we're actually already uh, we can actually get to a very, very different solution. So what's the first algorithm to pick these moves? Which moves will we, do we want to do? Well, the first algorithm is hill climbing, where you basically just say, um, I'm going to look at all the moves, uh, which you can see. So I start with the solution. This is a very bad one. This is not done by construction heuristic, but, but by uh, not even randomly. It's worse. You just put them all on the first row on the top, as you can see there. But we're going to look at all the possible uh, moves, all every, we're going to try every possible change move on that. So that basically means we're going to move one queen in every solution we look at. And then we're going to take the one with the lowest score there, and on that we're going to do, again, uh, the best move which is possible on that. And so after a couple of steps, we actually get to uh, the, the optimal solution. Now there's one big problem with hill climbing, and it's the reason why it's not called uh, mountain climbing is that um, it, once you get stuck in an optimal, uh, in a in local optimum, so where, uh, you, where any move you do actually degrades your score, but you, it's not the optimal solution. Like, like here, so you, you always go up, but if you don't look far enough, if you're not seeing the other mountain, you're going to get always be stuck on this hill. And you're never going to cross the chasm to go to up the mountain. So um, that's why, for example, here, local optimum can um, Hill climbing can get stuck, <coughs> it might get the start chasing its tail. So it's actually quite a bad algorithm. Um, but yeah, if you start with the construction heuristic and then with this, at least you have a solution and at least it's, it's, it's better. Um, the improvement upon that is double search, which is quite simple. Uh, you remember wherever you've been and you don't go back there again. So, um, so for example, here, uh, yeah, he's been to Mount Lofty, which is like the second biggest uh, mountain in the world. So he'll try a different path, which is actually going down. You never know. Um, at least it's going down compared to this path. Uh, so, yeah, and you get somewhere else. So, with double search, what you get is that he starts out the same as hill climbing, tries every move and he takes the best one. But what he then does is he remembers, okay, I've just moved, let's say, queen B. And he remembers, okay, I've moved queen B, so I'm not going to move that now for a number of steps. Uh, in this case, it's uh, two steps. Uh, and then he will be forced to move any of the other queens. And this is again, this is what is actually the case where he uh, got stuck chasing its own tail in hill climbing, and he actually gets out of that because he is unable to move, move queen D, he moves one of the others. In this case, it's move, he moves queen D. And the result of which, um, he gets to this solution, and uh, the next solution is actually optimal. So, the cycle is big enough. Um, I'm running out of time. Um, another one is uh, simulated annealing. Um, this works pretty much like, um, so anneal what is annealing? You take uh, an iron bar, you take steel, you melt it up, and you slowly cool it down so that the molecules can uh, uh, sit next to each other. It's the same thing, uh, it's simulated here. What you do is, you start with the solution, you generate a move, and you're going to accept this move if it is better, or when it is worse, you're going to accept it with a certain chance. So if, uh, depending on how much worse it is, and depending on how much time you've already been solving. If you're near the start of your solving schedule, you're going to pretty much accept any move. If you're near the end, you're pretty much going to only accept moves which are improving. Uh, and this gets the effect of, of, of the similar meaning of the steel where the molecules fit each other. You're slowly going to converge to uh, the optimal solution. And uh, this seems weird, but it actually works really well. So, and every time you need to make a decision, you're basically going to roll a random dice, uh, apply the formula, which is e to the power of the, the diff of the score divided by the temperature. Um, it's a nice algorithm. Big problem with this is the temperature. You need to set in a, a temperature at the beginning, and it's it's very hard to to, to, to tweak that. And um, so, it's not my favorite one because it's it's, it's hard to tweak it. A better version of this, this, this is two year, this is late acceptance, which is pretty new, invented two or three years ago, if I recall correctly. Uh, where we're basically going to, um, so uh, you're basically going to look at, okay, I'm going to take any score where, uh, which is this, 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 uh, at least the score of a number of steps ago. So 
more in the long term the score will actually improve, but uh, in short term you might actually go down. So in something like this we do okay. Uh, if we have a certain score at the top, minus four, you can see, starting from this this step, we're going to say we're going to not accept this step because the score uh, will not improve. Okay, I'll skip the benchmarking. We have a whole benchmarking framework in Opta Planner, uh, but uh, if you want more information about it, uh, ask me after this call. Uh, so thanks for listening. Uh, and if there are any questions. Thank you, Jeffrey. Time for one question. Right. Um, in your planner at the beginning, you were showing artists and then self concern. Uh, here you are all considering self concern, of course, you would use uh, completely. So, uh, how do you do with artists? Oh, so, uh, how do others, the planner, deal with artists? Okay, yeah, so uh, you can model your score in the soft planner with hard constraints and soft constraints. You can actually do hard, medium, and soft constraints on more levels. And it will always, uh, it will actually go graphically compare them, which, which means if, uh, if you have two solutions and one has more hard constraints broken than the other, the one with the least one will always win, regardless of the soft constraints. If they have the same hard constraints broken, then they, they will be compared on soft constraints to decide who wins. Um, but yeah, NQ oh, only has hard constraints or soft constraints, it only has one level of constraints. So, it's, 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 uh, so I mean, uh, in many cases, no better would be the other. If I set all the other constraints and I want to find a solution, yeah. your algorithms may be they're not going to find it. Yeah, it's a pro and there is a probability that, first of all, you don't know if there's a feasible solution. Feasible means no hard constraints broken. And second of all, meta heuristics always have a chance, and construction heuristics definitely that they won't find it. With exact algorithms, you have this chance, but you just have to wait a couple of 10 to the power of 100 years. So. Um, the, the game is not finding the, the, the optimal solution uh, when you start scaling out. It's finding the best solution in reasonable time, so you have something you can actually put in production. And if your company has enough uh, resources, enough vehicle holes, that's very easy. And the, the game is actually to try to minimize the soft constraints, or uh, optimize the soft constraints, so you use as uh, little uh, budget and make it uh, people as happy as possible. Okay. Everybody else has questions for Jeffrey, please take it outside so you can stick on schedule.